Pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, and visible justice for all. Okay, next order of business. We have no public comment. Um, we also, I got a note this time in case anybody's been watching these meetings. It says, hey, dummy, don't forget that we <laughs> held an executive session before this hearing. So there was an executive session held. Uh, I added the, the rest of the comments. Um, now we will go to Karen for a 2022 budget update. Good afternoon. I, I know I, I don't have any pens for you and I don't have any cookies, but we do have the fresh off the press 2021 consulting engineers report that includes the 2022 capital and operating budget. So it's not a pen, but what can I say? Merry Christmas. <laughs> so um, moving forward with the presentation, grab my clicker, hopefully we'll have better success than we did in November. Okay, we're going to go through this relatively quickly. Um, the budget is a, is a long process. Everybody and the, and the managers, the directors, they're all involved in this process. It's a cumulative effort of everybody here at the authority. Um, everyone pitches in and does a great job of getting all their information in, and we accumulate it, and we pass it out. It was reviewed by the board in the November board meeting. And then I was able to have open it up for questions and answers. We had three weeks of time for the board to review that information. Um, and we came back today with the final budget, which we'll be asking you to approve and later on in the agenda when we get to the action items. Um, again, the board reviewed it. it was, it's going to be going for approval. And then we're going to be getting copies to the trustee here after it's approved and in compliance with the trust indenture. So some highlights for the budget, we had a 7% rate increase um, budgeted for 2022. Those rate increases is part of the five-year rate resolution that was passed by the board in October. Those rate resolutions goes out from 2022 through 2026. Uh, the budget also provides an additional almost $14 million for self-funded capital. Um, as we talk about the clean water program and everything that we're going to be doing, um, a substantial amount of that, almost $900 million, is going to be come from self-funded capital, things that are not going to be funded with bond funds. Um, we're also very excited and very pleased to report that the budget also increases of the clean water assistance payment for the fourth year in a row. So the program was started, and every year since the program was initiated, we have been able to increase that payment. This year, we were having the largest increase yet. We're increasing it by $5 a quarter to up to $40 a quarter. So that is going to really be a benefit to our most vulnerable rate payers. And we're very, very happy about that. Um, it also improves our coverage and liquidity ratios. And that's gonna be very important when we go later on in 2022, because we're gonna be looking at a substantial new money bond issue later this year. And the better off those ratios are, typically the results of the cheaper funding for the authority going forward. Um, lastly, but not leastly, it meets all the requirements of the trust indenture. So from a cash requirements, what are we looking at? We're looking at a total of about $387 million. The operating budget and the debt service budgets, those budgets only increase very slight from where they were from 2021, about a million dollars each. The heavy lift is really with the 2021 capital spending program. And we'll have some slides on that a little later in the presentation. And again, we talked about the self-funding capital reserves. So how are we going to fund that? Um, we're going to fund it through our rates, um, which is why we had the, the five-year rate uh, resolution in October. Uh, as you look at that slide there, what really pops out is that we are almost 100% funded by our ratepayers. Um, we are aggressively pursuing budgeted um, revenue streams that are other than alternative streams through grants um, and federal funding. So far, we have not been able to secure any of that funding, but it is not for lack of trying, and we will continue to pursue 
alternative funding as well. But right now, 100%, just shy of 100% comes from our ratepayers. So when you look at our budgeted expenses um, by, by operating function, this is where we're spending the money. Um, again, there's nothing here that should stand out to you because this is all real close to where it was for 2021. The one thing I do want to highlight here is that our employee benefits number, actually our, our health care went down for the for like the third year in a row. And the reason why is because we have a very robust wellness program. We're very proud of that program. Um, and it has been able to save us money on our medical premiums when in an industry where those premiums are going up sometimes by double digit increases, we've been able to reduce those premiums. So this is our capital spending. I'm, I'm sure you guys can all read that. Um, so there is the detail obviously is in your books um, and we are going to highlight some of those major projects here in, in just a slide or two. This is just a total to show you some of the projects that were closed and completed in 2021. Um, there isn't a whole lot here to report as far as being closed in 2021. We anticipate that this list will continue to grow larger and larger um, as we continue to progress through the clean water program. I'm gonna just turn it over here to Director Kennedy right now, and she's gonna to speak to some of the major initiatives that we have in our capital pro uh, program. Thank you, Karen. So this is of the uh, $207 million anticipated to be spent in 2022, this is the eight major spends. Um, and of these eight projects, they account for uh, just about $155 million worth of our budget for next year. So the first two are projects that were awarded um, already in 2020, actually, and uh, the North End is 2020, Ted Works was this year, but we anticipate uh, a lot of work being completed in 2022 associated with the construction of those projects. The third one is the environmental compliance facility, but it also includes the parking garage, um, since it's on the same site and we designed the, those two projects under the same project. That parking garage will be done in the spring and then the environmental compliance facility construction will begin. So that's a construction um, number as well at $20 million anticipated for 2022. And then the CSO bypass and disinfection, that is finishing up in design. That'll be bid next year. Um, and we anticipate about $15 million. Then there's a regional job for the um, sawmill run uh, subaqueous. And then uh, the last two are certainly very important and will become a real big component of capital budgets moving forward. And that is the uh, tunnel program management and the Ohio River Tunnel final design, which we, um, we awarded the fee in October. The uh, team got notice to proceed in November. There's gonna be a lot of work done next year to advance the Ohio River Tunnel final design. So that is the top eight spends that we'll be focused on for 2022. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Karen. Thanks, Kim. Um, so there will be a quiz at the end. You know, there's <laughs> reindeer. We have to guess the reindeer. Well, you're going to have to guess the major spends in the capital spending program. <laughs> okay, so from a rate perspective, you talked about the fact that we're almost 100% funded through our, our user rates. Um, so what does that mean? We have a 7% rate increase for 2022. It means that the average household bill will go up about $36 a, a, a quarter or or I'm sorry, $36 a year. That's the annual impact. And it's going to go up about a little less than $3 a month. So even though it, it sounds like it's 7%, it sounds like it's a lot of money. And, and it is. I mean, I don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, we appreciate every dime that we get in the door. Um, but it, the, the impact on a monthly basis is going to be less than $3 on an average household. So last couple slides here, um, credit rating. So we have not um, gone out and been reviewed by the credit agencies since we did the bond issue in 2020. Um, again, as you all know, we were upgraded in 2020 um, to A83 from A1 by Moody's and S&P upgraded us with the previous bond issue back in 2018. Um, they, they really like our consistently strong financials. And as you've heard me report, 
every month when we look at the budget to actuals, we're on target again to have another very strong year here as we wrap it up through this last month of 2021. Um, Long-term rate plan, the board just acted on a five-year rate resolution. So again, we're keeping with those items that the rating agencies have come to expect and have come to depend on from Alcasan um, that lends us to a strong credit rating. Um, they're looking, they like the Z agreements. They like the fact that the municipal customers are obligated to through the debt maturities. And so there isn't that, flex, that, that flexibility um, for us to be wondering who's in, who's out. Um, and again, we have the experienced management team and the flexibility in the clean water plan. So those, again, those are the positive credit strengths that we continue to build on and we're going to need as we go forward and we issue substantial debt in the next 15 years. What are some of the credit challenges that Alexan faces? Um, the, the biggest one is that obviously the consent decree is substantial, um, both in terms of cost and scope. So what does that mean? It means that we have a lot of, of work to do in a relatively short period of time. We have 15 years to get a lot a, a lot done and we're already heavily debt funded. And so that debt ratio is gonna to continue to climb. Um, and so when you look at our budgets and I'm sure you all have, we're about 37% of our operating budget when you add debt service and it goes towards debt service. So that is going to continue to increase as we move through the clean water plan. Um, so those are some of the credit challenges that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And that concludes my presentation. If there's any questions or comments, I'd be happy to, uh, to take those. Uh, I have none. I would just say, again, good job. I think, you know, for years we, we come here and we get a great report. At the end of the year, I think all board members um, would say that you, get, you and your team do an amazing job throughout the year giving us updates when needed and for the general public to see where our numbers are, what's happening. You guys do an amazing job, Karen. So thank you very much. And you know, we'll be hopefully approving at the end of the meeting, but thank you for everything. Thank yes. you. And I wish everyone a, ha a happy, a safe, and a healthy holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to our capital budget status report, uh, exhibit A. Kim? Thank you. So more capital budget talk. We are. Uh, By the way, Mr. Reach and I will just take D minuses on our test. Speak for yourself. I'll administer right. <laughs> so we're at uh, just over $68 million spent for the year. Obviously, a uh, lot of construction, um, a lot of really serious planning for the clean water plan activities. Um, and as I was looking at this report and thinking about it, I went back to my December 2020 budget report and we're uh, up $30 million from this day last year. So a lot has happened this year in advance with plant expansion and um, our planning outside of the fence. If you had any specific questions about certain line items, I'd be happy to answer them. Seeing no questions, thank you. Uh, we will go to our retained consultant report, uh, which is Hatch, and I believe Mike is via Zoom. Mike, take it away. Uh, thank you, Chairman O'Connor, members of the board and staff. Uh, I'd like to provide a brief update on Hatch's activities under our retained consultant contract over uh, the course of 2021. Um, We've already touched on it, the Consulting Engineers 2021 Annual Report. Uh, we work closely with Alcasan staff starting back in October to prepare the report and including the fiscal 2022 budget. Special thanks to all the staff who provided input and a special thanks to Karen who worked very closely with our staff to complete the report. Um, it's required by the trust indenture, as you're aware, uh, dated July 1st, 1997, supplemented uh, by the 11th supplemental trust indenture dated September 1st, 2018. So that that uh, bond issue is still being worked off before uh, moving to the next one. Um, some major projects that, that we were involved with this year, um, design services for new access shafts manholes near A40 and M49, 
we received authorization back in April to uh, prepare plans and specifications and numerous other services uh, for these new shaft manholes. Uh, the A40 manhole is uh, going to be near A40 uh, on the 48 inch diameter Allegheny River deep tunnel interceptor and near M49 on the 24 inch diameter river crossing interceptor that connects uh, into the, the Monongahela deep tunnel interceptor. Um, the two manholes are uh, going to be located at strategic points that is going to provide uh, access to the system uh, to, to provide a number of, uh, of things, to perform inspections, cleaning, and other maintenance tasks. Uh, there'll be a minimum of 10 feet in internal diameter. So these are these are large structures that uh, uh, will be, uh, you know, a big undertaking for construction. Uh, project also is, includes a relocation of the O15 diversion structure near Lowry, Lowry's Run in Ben Avon. Uh, soils borings have been completed at all three sites and uh, design work is in progress and uh, is, is moving along nicely now after uh, a little bit of trouble getting access to the M49 site. Um, early next year, uh, the Chartiers Ohio Junction access shaft upgrades will be put out for, for bids. Uh, we completed the design and we're working with Alcasan to onboard the CM uh, for the project soon. Uh, we look forward to working with Alcasan and the CM in the new year to, to issue bid documents and provide support during the bid and construction phase of the project. The project uh, will provide structural, mechanical, HVAC, and electrical upgrades to the facility. Um, this year, we started providing some staff augmentation services to Alcasan. Uh, we've been supplying support uh, during 2021 in two areas. First off, Don Colaberardino has been providing electrical engineering support at the treatment plant for the multitude of projects that are going on related to the plan expansion. And then more recently, um, a junior engineer, Courtney Dumb, uh, was assigned to the regional conveyance uh, department, and she's working closely with staff providing project engineering support on multiple collection and conveyance system capital projects. Uh, and then just to touch on a few more things, uh, under our retained consultant, contract. Uh, there's a number of things we do as well as miscellaneous projects and engineering support. Uh, Bi-weekly capital improvement program meetings are held with staff to provide updates on capital projects that, that, the, that are in either engineering or the construction phases. Uh, review and approve approval of construction fund, construction fund requisitions on a monthly basis. Um, we also completed some additional soils boring and lab testing near A42, which is the Highland Park uh, 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 dam, uh, property owned by the Corps. Uh, it's going to be critical uh, information that's going to be used by regional conveyance and the tunnel program manager uh, for design of the Allegheny River Tunnel and near surface consolidation sewers. Uh, we've been tasked a number of times with providing miscellaneous structural engineering support um, and evaluations on an as-needed basis. Uh, we've done a couple of analysis uh, related to construction vehicle uh, loading limits on various structures at the plant. Um, construction management and resident inspection services for contract 1674 modifications to the diversion chambers at A17 and M59. Uh, provide resident inspection services on an on-call basis to cover overnight, weekends, or emergencies. And finally, construction administration support on an as-needed basis for shop drawing reviews or other technical assistance, uh, primarily to uh, the regional conveyance uh, folks. With that, I thank you for your time and wishing everyone a happy holiday season. Thank you, Mike, and thank you to your team for always being on spot for all those projects that we have all across our service area. So thank you again, and have a good holiday season to you and your team as well. Thank you.
All right, we are now headed to the report uh, of action by executive director and approval change orders less than $30,000. See exhibit B, contract 1728 E, the RAS pipe and pump replacement for Wellington Power for the amount of $25,000. Mr. Chairman, this change order incorporates two primary components and both uh, related to electrical work. The first, uh, the mounting or a change in mounting for transformers uh, that anticipated they were going to be on the ground, needed to be wall mounted. The second piece is uh, it's a little more complicated, but it's a good story. Nonetheless, the general contractor decided that they would move forward with work that had not been anticipated. So we ended up needing to purchase the additional uh, power distribution center so they could move forward. Work is progressing and we're pleased to report. All right. Sounds good. Seeing no questions, we'll move to action items. Can I have an approval of the board minutes as well as the invoices? Exhibit C. Second. All in favor? Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. Prior to, I would simply like to point out the invoice list changed just a little bit from what you have received with your packet last week. Okay. We had an additional invoice from GAI that I added. That is on page three, nothing out of the ordinary. It was just the time issue with the meeting being so early. Uh, the, for the CSO bypass, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, motion a second, we have, uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, uh, motion to award following contract, emergency SOAR televising contract to Robinson Pike Cleaning Company at a price of $1 million. C bids that were received in exhibit D. Chairman, annual contract with Robinson. It's appropriate. We recommend approval. All right. Need a motion to so move. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Uh, item D, motion to authorize uh, the preparation of advertisements for bids for the following contracts. See Exhibit E, Contract 1759, Environmental Compliance Facility, 1760, CSO Bypass and Disinfection, 1761, Furnish, uh, Deliver, Screw, Conveyor, Component, and Dewatering Building. Mr. Chairman, the first two are two of the big eight that we just heard about. Uh, pleased to see those moving forward as the board is aware to be able to get to the construction schedule that Kim identified. You need to take this action at this point. So we're making progress in 2022. And the third is typical maintenance needs for day-to-day -day operations, consent decree and everything else aside. I need a motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item E, motion to approve following contracts, uh, change orders that exceed $30,000, exhibit F, uh, number one, contract 1729, the RAS pipe and pump replacement for Cocosing construction at amount of $97,000. Item two, Alcasan parking garage for from Mike Coates construction for amount of $102,000. Mr. Chairman, the first change order is, as it simply says, for replacement of the roof on four of the return activated sludge pumping stations. As this work was progressing, it had been anticipated that there could be patches, modifications. They need to be replaced. I believe they're 1990 vintage roofs. Okay. They're 
it's time for them to go be second uh, for the parking garage that you came in. I'm sure you could. Uh, there, it's impossible that you could not notice the progress. Uh, it was necessary to dig a little deeper to hit the necessary bedrock. This change order provides for that additional digging. No questions. Motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item F, motion to award uh, the GROW Grant, C Exhibit G. I would also say uh, Doctor and I are on that subcommittee. They do an amazing job. Um, to Tim and his team, uh, good job and a continued growth for our region and green infrastructure. I, I think uh, it's a very good program that we have. Um, anything additional? Simply no. a housekeeping issue. Housekeeping, yeah. Additional time for these projects. All right, need a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion, uh, item G, motion to reappoint Lorraine Makatora to the Three Rivers Wet Weather Board for a term of two years. Mr. Chairman, as the board is aware, Three Rivers Wet Weather is an organization that was created by the authority along with the health department. And as such, we were responsible for appointing so many board members. We are responsible for a municipal appointment. Ms. Makatora is the Avalon Borough Manager. And this will be, as it indicates, a reappointment. The board appointed her to three rivers for the first time in 2019. All right. Motion and a second. So move. Second. Again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item H, motion to adopt resolution 2021 12-1, consenting to the city of Pittsburgh vacating a certain section of Wabash Street in the 20th Ward, um, allowing the executive director to enter into an agreement for this easement with the property owner, uh, Low Street Associates, um, and the easement will go to uh, what is it to convey uh, uh, the sore line easement to Alcasan beneath all the vacant vacated roads? Mr. Chairman, well said. And because I would not any I would not want anybody to have the impression that the executive director just willy nilly participates in vacating streets. Our director of regional conveyance, Mike Litch, is going to explain oh. what this is oh. all about. Give it to him, Mike. <laughs> Can you, hear, can you hear me? Yep. So, all right. Very good. Um, th this resolution uh, relates uh, to the vacation of uh, a portion of Wabash Street in the West End. Uh, for the board's information, uh, we have two interceptors in this area. We have a 42-inch newer interceptor uh, that was installed in the 90s uh, along, along Wabash Street. We have an older interceptor in McKnight Street. Uh, that was installed in the 1920s. Um, just for reference, uh, th this area is located just south of Sawmill Run Boulevard uh, and Route 51 uh, near Chandler Street Bridge, um, about a quarter mile from the uh, Fort Pitt Tunnels. Uh, the property owner there, sh shown uh, Low Street Associates, they made a street vacation request uh, to the city of Pittsburgh back in 2019. Um, this is this vacation would, would essentially convert uh, the portion shown in red to uh, private property. Uh, the property owner wishes to use this area for uh, parking. Um, since Alcacian owns and maintains a 42 inch interceptor in this uh, area, in this street, uh, the city would only consider uh, vacating the street if Alcacian would first only first assent to it. Uh, so uh, in exchange for our approval, uh, the Low Street Associates, since this is going to be converted to private property, has agreed uh, to provide Alcastan with an easement for the 42-inch interceptor uh, with all prior ingress and egress rights and maintenance privileges preserved. So we would basically come out the same uh, before or after this, this uh, uh, vacation is uh, performed. 
So in consideration of, of uh, our, our easement and privileges just being concerned, uh, we recommend adoption of this resolution. Good explanation. That's good. Good to hear. So the city gets more tax revenue, right? <laughs> right? They have to pay <laughs> <taxes>. <laughs> Always thinking. Always thinking. Um, uh, I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item I, motion to adopt resolution 2021-12-2, uh, adopting the updated capacity charge in the amount of $8.6 million or yeah, million per gallon per day as supported by the updated calculation of capacity charge for new service areas July 2021 prepared by Hatch. Mr. Chairman, the board will recall that we come to you to have the retained consultant update the capacity charge, which had not been updated in many a year. Uh, this is the result. You're simply adopting it to make it a formal part of our program. All right, motion and a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item J, motion to approve board meetings for the calendar 2022 year. Need a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item K, motion to adopt 2021 uh, engineering report and operating uh, capital budgets. Uh, again, Karen, to your team and everybody, thank you very much, as well as Kim and the engineering department as well. Need a motion and a motion. second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I said something else, I'm sorry. Uh, so we do have one bit of new business. Um, if you notice, everybody is has some form of purple on. Um, we did wear purple because we all took the Vikings plus three and a half tonight. <laughs> uh, they're playing this. Fight! And I would actually give a shout out to our, our newest board member who actually her purse is purple today. So she went <laughs> all in on why we are wearing purple, but I will pass it off to our executive director to explain why everybody is in purple tonight. Thank you. What we call our purple shirt campaign or the shirt off your back celebrations of life campaign. Typically, we're doing this um, October ish, and with everything else that has gone on, we had to bump it back, but we did not want to miss it. I would ask people to go to the Alcasand website to find out what purple shirt and the shirt off of your back is all about. For right now, I'll share with you, we use it as a fundraising initiative. This year, we have selected Living in Liberty as the recipient of all donations through this year's campaign. Living in Liberty addresses human trafficking, more specifically, sexual and sex worker trafficking. It is uh, incomprehensible and heinous crime, a crime where all too often the victims, the women, in some cases, children who are being trafficked end up in the criminal justice system because of the acts that they're committing. And they have no way out. It is lose, lose, lose for them. If not for people providing a safe haven and a helping hand, like living in Liberty. I was, I was very struck with the observation made by a representative of living 
in liberty. And that is with every other trafficking mode. It's a one-time shot. If people traffic weapons, they sell a gun, the gun is gone. If it's drugs, they sell a kilo, a kilo is gone. With people, with human lives, they just keep churning again and again and again until they wear them out, or in some cases, they try to get out and they kill them. Please, if, if, if you've got a heart that is as repulsed by this as we are, go to our website, check out our campaign, and donate to Living in Liberty, which is a local organization dealing with women, children, and men right here to put an end to this misery. You can do it. We can do it. Let's help. Well said. Well said. Thank you, Director. And, and I think we don't talk about it enough, but not only that organization, but the others that you guys support. A lot of people don't talk about what Alcasan and the employees and everybody does to support outside agencies that support causes like the one you just said. So credit to you for starting that tradition here for a number of years. So thank you very much. Um, with that, we will adjourn this meeting.